and welcome to Witness, bringing you people's stories from all over the globe. I'm Rida Fakhri. Pakistan is a country usually in the news for all the wrong reasons. Terrorism, suicide bombings, killing of civilians. It is also believed by many to be a base for Al-Qaeda. What is not so often reported are the many Pakistanis fighting to make the country a place with a better future. One of these is Maryam Bibi, a courageous woman working tirelessly to give girls the chance of an education in the conservative tribal lands of the Northwest. Here, women are strictly segregated, and the government is locked in a long-running war with Pakistan's Taliban, who are, among much else, vehemently opposed to the education of girls. Filmmaker Farah Durrani followed Maryam Bibi from her headquarters in Peshawar to the remote tribal areas where the Taliban can still strike at will. Maryam's mission. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In the name of God, this is a warning to you NGOs that you stop these disgusting activities. We know the addresses of all the women who work for you. Stop this work by Friday or you will be responsible for the consequences. Hello, this is Mariam Bibi. You remember the demonstration? Please do come. If only if it is for five minutes, please do come. Don't forget. This is just a reminder. For years, Mariam Bibi has campaigned for girls' education through her NGO, Quando Call. Today, she also feels driven to lead peace marches against the Taliban terror, which is targeting civilians and burning schools. But we'll try to visit at least two or three places where bomb blasts have uh, taken place just to show solidarity. We have to give strength to others who have directly suffered. We don't know about our life. Uh, what, what can happen tomorrow? The protesters risk their lives marching to the site of each new bomb blast, knowing the police can't protect them. Everybody gathers at the Peshawar Press Club to march to the market where so many were killed. A lot of innocent people have been killed in this war, and I fear that many more will be killed. We want peace! We want peace! We want peace! We want peace. We want peace. Back at Quando Kaur's head office, the operations manager Khalid Osman reads Maryam a letter that's been delivered. You people are working against Islam. The dirty and disgusting women that you employ is forbidden in Islam. And the charity that you are getting from America is too forbidden in Islam. Stop this work by Friday or else you will be responsible for the consequences. You will know if you don't stop this filthy business. Amir, leader, Taliban movement, Peshawar, Pakistan. After our uh, procession, within three days, there was a bomb blast. The press club was attacked because it was becoming a symbol of a peace movement. Mariam Bibi began her mission for girls' education more than a decade before suicide bombings began in Pakistan. She set up Quando Kaur, meaning Sister's Home, in 1993, motivated by her own experience of childhood and marriage in tribal society. My mother, she would say, don't speak loudly because this is against Islam. If you go to work, your earning uh, will not have a blessing. When I got married, I had an uh, extremely difficult time because my husband was uh, mentally not well. For a long time, uh, I felt helpless and I was totally dependent on my in-laws. And I started reading more and more about uh, Islam myself. And a lot of things started coming, becoming clear to me. And uh, that gave me strength also. Mariam Bibi began with just one school in one village. 
Today, she secured international and local funding. Thus. Cuando Cor has become a leading player, employing over 300 staff and running 269 schools in remote parts of Pakistan's tribal districts. Our main aim is to give them quality education and to work with the local people and the feudal lords and religious leaders and then work in collaboration with them. Keeping up these community links means a lot of travel. Today, it's Karak, four hours drive from Peshawar to renew community contacts and support the staff in the regional office. Since Pakistan sided with America in its war with the Taliban and Al-Qaeda, the threat to Maryam Bibi and her staff has increased. NGOs are facing a problem because NGOs are dependent on foreign aid and we are seen as we are working for Western agenda, which is not true. Earlier this year, a bomb was found in the courtyard of the Karak office. Then a driver was shot at. But it was what happened to one of the staff, Kulsum, and her driver that left all the staff feeling vulnerable. रोजाना The kidnappers then left the main road, and for hours, Goldsum and her driver were driven around the side streets of Karak. After four hours of driving, Kulsum was told to get out of the car, head straight to her office and contact no one along the way. The kidnappers then demanded a ransom of two and a half million rupees for the driver. Then, after a month of negotiation, the driver was released without any payment. The police are still investigating. The driver has now left us, but at that time it was terrible. The government agencies, they wanted us to close office instead of supporting us. But we decided that we will never close the office. I was so impressed, the courage the staff showed. During the war with the Taliban, the militants have destroyed over 200 schools, leaving religious schools untouched and targeting those run by the government and NGOs. Fearing for their lives, many foreign NGOs have left the country, but Maryam Bibi and her staff, with their strong community links, have continued their work despite Taliban threats. As the army reopens roads, Mariam Bibi visits her schools to assess the damage for the first time. I'm going to Deer to, to look at those schools which are burned and destroyed by Taliban. Our team in Deer district is led by Ibrash. It's a very dangerous journey. The Taliban are still around. Daily there are bomb blasts. The whole thing is 
uh, political to get power to deceive ordinary people that it is done in the name of religion. There are schools that belongs to religious political party is not even touched, whereas government school and other school are destroyed. Look, someone has very proudly written, uh, this is our school, Allah Nigeban. We give it in the custody of Allah. How are they going to be accountable for this in front of God or Allah? They have done this in the name of Islam and I think they have destroyed Islam by doing this. This is in our court village and uh, we are standing in the government girls primary school. It's very cold and the girls, they are now sitting in the open air. We are uh, constructing these steel structures for the tents and uh, we will start our schools again. While Ibrash Pasha and the local villagers get to work erecting frames for tents, Mariam Bibi talks to the village elders. The military operation was going over here. The Taliban, they were confronting the government. In this little village, four schools have been burnt. So what kind of message they wanted to give by burning girls' school? What was the message? Well, well for me, the obvious message is to furnish my village, that they should, they do, uh, should not get uh, any more education from here. We have just heard a news. Uh, somebody called that there is a bomb blast in Balambat Colony uh -huh. and police lines, which is very near to our office. I think we should go back. Mariam Bibi and the Brash leave the work on the tents and head back to Timurgara, unsure what to expect. Join me again after the break here on Witness. Welcome back to Witness. I'm Rida Fakhri. Maryam Bibi is determined that Pakistani girls in the conservative tribal areas should get an education. But a bomb blast near the organization's offices poses the latest threat to her mission. Maryam Bibi and her colleague Ibrash Pasha from the charity Kwando Corps are driving to Timagara, the main town in the northern tribal district of Deir. They've just heard that there's been a bomb blast near their office. Security is tight as they arrive. Mosque is here. This is the, uh, the, the wall of the mosque and uh, our office is very near. It's two, three men's walk to our office. मस्जिद में अंदर थे। आवाज सुनाई के बाद हम जमीन पर लेटे और लोग एकदम इकट्ठे होकर बाहर निकल, बाग निकले। जब बाहर निकला है तो देखा तो सब लोग जो है ना किसी पे आग लगी थी और कोई किसी का आंख नहीं था, किसी का सर नहीं था, किसी का टांग नहीं था, किसी का हाथ नहीं था। तो हमें भी मुकाम मिला एक जख्मी को उठा they are still investigating, but they are thinking that it was remote control bomb blast and fixed in a car, which was blown. This is our training room. So let's see the situation inside. Thank God office is okay uh, and it's nothing as compared to innocent people going to mosque and being killed. Today we came to know that 17 people died including one woman. That has clearly shown that the, the Taliban are here and any time they can attack and people are fearful. Security is an issue, but we won't be discouraged by it and that we will keep on making our efforts. We have to go and we have to finish our job. 
first on the list is a visit to a remote village called Badwan, with about a thousand inhabitants. It's a poor community, but with the help of Kwandokor, the villagers have built a school for 50 children. We are running this school uh, since last uh, seven, eight years. The girls especially, they were uh, deprived of getting education and we have provided this opportunity up to grade fifth. And uh, we are also trying to uh, upgrade this school up to middle level, up to class eight. The next stop is the girls' high school in Hayarsari. It was right in the middle of the village, but it now lies in ruins. <laughs> She's saying they were not around when uh, this military operation started, so they had vacated their village. Uh, when they came back, the school was destroyed, so they were in shock. And uh, the school had huge corridors and everything was destroyed within one night. And she said, I, I don't know who did it. I asked, do you think it, uh, Taliban did it? She said, I don't know, I can't say anything. Hmm. The last stop is the village of Chinarkot, where they return to finish setting up the tents for their temporary classroom. such a big relief that we could do something. We know the journey is long and hard, but this is the first step. No matter what, you can't reach women. It's so deeply entrenched in the, the culture that women should be segregated. That segregation still affects Mariam Bibi in her work as chief executive of Kwandokor. It colors everything. We are the men and we can go outside and eat in the restaurant. Due to the cultural constraint, we sent the food for her to the van. I feel that I'm very lonely uh, in doing this work. I have heard many remarks. Look at this elderly lady and she is not ashamed of herself. I would like other elderly women to join because it's a matter of their children. It's a matter of future generation and we have to do something. Back at the Kwandokor office in Timagara, Mariam Bibi, as always, focuses on the future. She's asked Salimul Rahman, a clinical psychologist, to assess how the children have been affected by the fighting. To start his assessment, he gives the children pictures and asks them to write down their impressions. This is just a, a picture of a man, common labor man of this area. This picture is a, a picture in which uh, two children are sitting on a bench and one man is lying beneath a tree. And we have to see what our children think about and what is in their mind. Yeah. 
का डर नहीं है ये हमारा दुश्मन है ये हमारे मुल, मुल्क को तबाह करना चाहता है She's saying this man is very, very upset. She, he's very sad uh, because he has severe headache. And why he has headache? Because his daughter has died. This city is one of the people. His name is Ali. His hand is a bad man. His name 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 is a bad man. This uh, terror and this fear has gone into the hearts and minds and the whole, you know, life of small children. Rather than flowers and gardens and books, they are thinking about, you know, guns and bombs and destruction. So far, we have concluded out of 35 students, 30 students are suffering from uh, depression, anxiety and post-traumatic stress disorder. They have mentioned that in this picture, they saw terrorist, Talib, destroyed home, destroyed school, having no teacher and uh, no furniture in their school. Moreover, uh, they are reflecting that they are very poor people. No one is there to help them. If we don't take care of them at this particular time, Later on, they will produce a big problem for themselves, for country, and for their own children. But Mariam's mission to educate is under attack, and on the road home, she has to make a stop. Yesterday, two schools have been burnt again. It, it is a big shock. How cruel, how cruel. I don't know what kind of heart and mind people have who can do this thing. It shows that government alone cannot do it. We have to struggle more and that everyone has to join. That's it for this edition. Thank you for watching, and I hope you'll join me next time here on Witness.